Thank you, Norman. We're ready when you are. Okay, thank you.
Good morning and a very warm welcome to you all. It's wonderful to have you here, whether you're here in church this morning or whether you're joining us from your homes. It's wonderful that we can all gather together in worship this morning. It's great to have Norman playing for us from his home and he'll be helping us with our hymns this morning and Rachel and Bernardo will be helping us with our readings and intercessions this morning and they will be here in church. So it's, it's wonderful whether you're here in church this morning or whether at home we, to be able to join together as one people in worshipping uh, our wonderful and glorious God. And so thank you for being here this morning. For those of you participating from home, just to say that you will need your service sheet and a hymn sheet. And if you're at home, then you can sing along with full vigor and luster. And if you're here in church, just a reminder that we will meditate upon the words rather than singing them out this morning. And also, if you're at home, you may want to have a piece of bread beside you when it comes to that point in the service when we remember Christ and his presence among us. There is a hive this morning, so um, during the first hymn, if children, you want to go head out with Sarah for that. And then also to say that if you were here in church last week, um, we took a, one or two photographs from the back of church to show what the service is like socially distanced, which we quite like to put on the website and also uh, maybe have an article in the Echo magazine. It only shows the back of people's heads. So if you were here last week and for whatever reason you prefer not for a picture of the back of your head to go into, into either, onto either our website or, onto, into, the, uh, or into Echo, uh, could you let me know at the end of the service and we'll, we'll try and uh, produce a photograph that doesn't include you in it. Um, but there is no sort of, there's no faces apart from my own. So uh, hopefully that will be okay. This week after the service, we're trying something new, and particularly if you are joining us from home, uh, this will be something uh, that you may want to join in with, and that is that we're offering the opportunity for people to have a chat on Zoom. So um, this is something that a lot of churches have been doing over the last few months, is during the, what would be normally a tea and coffee time, is for people to join in with a, with a, a wider group of people via Zoom. And uh, if you'd like to do that, the details for that I sent out with the email on Friday. And all you need to do is click on that link and then you can join with other people um, that are doing that. And a big thank you to Ed and Alison Manning who are helping to host that this morning. But of course, as well as doing that, if you'd prefer to ring somebody, then please do that as well. That You'd be most welcome to give people a ring. And for those of us who are here in church, there's the opportunity to have a socially distanced chat out on the lawn uh, after the service. And also to say birthday congratulations to Roz Chester Buxton, who celebrates her birthday on Tuesday, and also a couple of wedding anniversaries. Uh, Andrea and Richard French are celebrating their 21st wedding anniversary and Marjorie and Ian Leach their 49th wedding anniversary and both of their both those couples are celebrating on Friday so a big uh, congratulations to you too. Well let's begin with our words of greeting that you'll find in your service sheets. Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Well, our sermon theme this morning looks forward to the time when Christ will come again. And so our first hymn is, At the Name of Jesus, Every Knee Shall Bow. And please do sing along at home, and please do join in the words in your heart here in this morning in church. So Norman, thank you. Glory now, tis 
sinners unto whom he came. Great for thee he bore in, spotless to the last, brought it back victorious when from death he To the central high, to the throne of God, here, to the Father's heart, filled it with the glory of thy perfect friend. Let your hearts enthrone him. Thank you. And so let us pray our prayer of preparation. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done, and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And please would you stand as we say the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of god the father amen 
and the church's special prayer for today. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as Rachel comes to read our first reading. The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 to 8. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God who is like me. Let them proclaim it. Let them declare and set it forth before me. Who has announced from of old the things to come? Let them tell us what is yet to be. Do not fear or be afraid. Have I not told you from of old and declared it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? There is no other rock. I know not one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Rachel. Please stand for our gospel reading. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you. O oh Lord. Jesus told the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed ears, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servant came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them out? No, he answered, because while you are pulling out the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it to my barn. Then Jesus left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, this morning and for the next few weeks, we are going to be focusing on Jesus' teachings and actions as recorded in Matthew's Gospel. 
Today's gospel reading prompts us to reflect on our attitude to wrong and evil. And I confess that I find my attitude to such things can veer between two extremes. There are times when I can be hugely indignant and angry at evil and at what I perceive as injustice. Something must be done and must be done immediately. These people should be condemned in the strongest possible terms. And then there are other times when I just shrug my shoulders. Oh, well, this is what happens. Nothing can be done about it. Anger and apathy. In the parable of the weeds, Jesus explores these two attitudes to evil. The parable itself is a simple farming story, all too familiar to farmers and gardeners down through the ages. A crop gets sown and shows promise, but then weeds somehow get in amongst the crop. The weeds or the tares were most likely a mongrel form of wheat, suitable only for chicken feed and quite unfit for human consumption. The servants want to pull them out immediately. The farmer has more patience. The weeds and the crop can be separated in due time when they are harvested, and then the weeds can be destroyed. This is one of those rare parables where Jesus interprets it for us, explaining what the various elements of the story represent. While this makes the meaning of the parable easier to grasp, it makes its application no less challenging. Jesus was living at a time when there was strong religious movements pressing for religious purity. The Pharisees and the Essenes were two such groups. They wanted to form pure religious communities where all members would be godly and righteous and where contact with those who were compromising the faith who were sinful outsiders would be limited, would be cut off. Not only that, they wanted to see justice enacted on those who broke the religious laws. And whether that meant justice by condemnation and ostracism, or whether it meant justice by a more violent form through revolutionary revolt. And Jesus' parable had a clear message for those groups. This is not the time to force God's hand. To pull out the weeds now, to act against what you see as evil, will only cause more damage, more hurt, more pain. There is a need for patience, to trust in God's timing that justice will be done. Today we may find it hard to identify with that religious polarization, that desire to create a them and us type world, although it does still certainly exist. But a much greater prominence perhaps at the moment is the political and cultural polarization that we see played out in the news and on social media almost on a daily basis. We see it in the United States over the last few weeks with something as seemingly neutral as face coverings becoming a hotly political issue. If you wear a face covering, you're pro-Democrat. If you don't wear a face covering, you're pro-Republican. How can such an issue that is purely about health become so politicized? We've seen it in this country too, over an issue that still exists, but perhaps gets less mentioned these days, Brexit it still remains a subject that divides people, families, neighbors, communities, where people of both persuasions are still happy, happy to roundly condemn those who hold to the other viewpoint. We see it too in how quick people are to condemn others, to use social media to publicly shame others. A recent letter signed by 150 authors, academics, and activists spoke of the vogue for public shaming and ostracism, driven by what they described as a blinding moral certainty. And that blinding moral certainty can lead to demands for instant justice. 
instant punishment for wrongdoers. There is rarely the time afforded to step back and question whether such anger genuinely leads to positive outcomes or whether the accuser's own houses are truly in order. Jesus' words speak into that culture, condemning others, demanding instant justice, leads to more damage than good, creating us and them boundaries, those who are acceptable and those who are not, those who, who are right and those who are wrong, those who are evil and those who are good. Well, that does not achieve justice and the overturning of evil. Instead, Jesus calls us to patience, to trust in the justice of God, who will in his time judge truly and justly. It is not our role to judge and condemn. It is our role to patiently love and to work for good. Which leads us on to the second of our two attitudes, that evil doesn't really matter, or that if it does matter, it's inevitable. There is nothing that we can do about it. And when we are faced with the immensity of issues, when we reflect on the terrible nature of human behavior, we may be tempted to despair, whether that's at a personal level, and the breakdown in relationships, the anger, the, the verbal, the physical, the emotional abuse that takes place. Whether that is at a community level and issues of homelessness, poverty, discrimination and crime. Whether it's at a global level and the wanton destruction of the environment or the ease with which nations resort to violence and war. We may feel that, well, nothing can be done. But Jesus' parable speaks to that attitude too. For we can't just shrug our shoulders at evil. The point of the parable is that evil is taken seriously. Injustice and wrongdoing will be held to account. There will be a reckoning. The farmer in the field isn't going to throw away the whole crop or mix it in with the inedible weeds as if he hadn't noticed. The weeds, the evil, will be sifted out, but it will be in his timing and according to his ways. Our reading from the prophet Isaiah, which Rachel read for us this morning, speaks of a God who is the first and the last, the one who controls the beginning and end of time. The book of Revelation, in similar language, describes God as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The point is that the future is in God's hands, and in Christ we see where the future will lead. For in Christ we see the God of ultimate compassion and justice, through whose death and resurrection sin and evil are dealt with and defeated. Because of Christ, we look forward to the future with hope, not the hope of someone sat in a darkened room waiting for a flickering candle to be lit, but the hope of a people in the early morning dawn who know that the sun has risen and are now waiting for the full brightness of midday. In Christ, we have glimpsed the dawn. We know that the brightness of his return in full glory will come. And that hope gives us the confidence to act now, to stand up for what is right and true against what is evil and false, to pray and live out those words of the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We can do that in the full confidence that one day justice will prevail. For there is a middle way a transforming way between those two attitudes of judgmentalism and apathy, between condemnation and despair. A middle way that trusts God to bring his justice, his victory over evil, 
in his time and in his way. And that seeks humbly to work with God in his purposes now. Shaped by a God of both justice and mercy, we are called to live lives of love. Lives that cry out against the evil in the world and that long for God's mercy on all his people. Amen. So please would you stand as we say the words of the creed together. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please would you be seated. And before Bernardo comes to lead us in our, please be seated. Before Bernardo comes to lead us in our prayers, we're going to sing our second hymn now. It's a hymn that helps us to continue those words that we were hearing the sermon of calling out to God, of praying that come Lord Jesus, that he may bring his justice and righteousness. So Norman's going to lead us in our hymn, Great is the darkness that covers the earth. Come Lord Jesus. Thank you, Norman. Great is the darkness that covers the earth, oppression, injustice, and pain. Nations are slipping in hopeless despair, and many have come in your name. Watching while sanity dies, touched by the madness and lies.
Norman, thank you. And we're going to continue in that theme of prayer as Bernardo comes to lead us in our intercessions. Thank you, Bernardo. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hear, hear us in our prayers which we raise to you today. As we come to terms with the consequences of the coronavirus, Father, we pray for all the victims around the world and in the UK, for those who have lost their lives directly and indirectly, and for their relatives and friends. We pray for your healing and peace, which passes all understanding, Lord. May we as, as Christians be beacons of hope and an example to others when we do deal with bereavement ourselves. Around the world, we pray for the people and countries where the number of infections is still going up, especially for those whose healthcare system risks collapsing in Africa, Asia, and South America. And Father, we give thanks for the firefighters who have saved the Cathedral of Nantes in France from the flames yesterday morning and for the positive steps taken by the UN to call for a global ceasefire. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for our political leaders and members of parliament as they tackle pressing issues that will affect millions of people for many years. We pray for openness and cooperation in the negotiations about Brexit with our neighboring countries in the EU, for a supportive approach to freedom in Hong Kong and around the world, and for a bold approach to tackling climate change through investment in green initiatives. In our city, we give you thanks, Father, for all the extraordinary efforts made by many people in Coventry through food banks, the NHS, services and charities. We pray for the Everyone In initiative that has seen over 150 homeless people in our city being housed during COVID-19. May the council will get the resources needed to continue housing everyone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Anglican Communion, as the Olympic Games have been postponed for one year, we pray especially for the people of Japan, for the Anglican Church in Japan, and for the National Christian Council of Japan, as they continue to plan a games that will help unite a divided world and give peace to all who will attend or take part. We pray for all who leave out their Christian faith under the shadow of religious persecution, and we give thanks for the work of Christian Solidarity Worldwide and other organizations as they strive to influence attitudes and behaviors, policies and legislation that lead to religious discrimination and persecution. In our diocese, we pray for safe travel for all those going on day trips for holidays this summer. Lord, give care and wisdom to all drivers and especially to those carrying passengers on public transport. In our parish, we pray for all who live in Urson Street and Eastley Avenue, and for the residents and staff of St. Andrew's House. In our CTEC prayer cycle, we pray for the members of All Souls Church, for their priest, Father Paul Birch, and for their deacon, Paul Rabbuka. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. We pray, Father, for those in hospital, for Anne Wemmerling and Mary Owen. We also pray for all those who are ill, recovering from surgery, awaiting results of recent medical tests, and the housebound. Especially, we mention Wynne Morgan, Wena Hughes, Stephanie Cotton, and Ben Spriggs. We pray that they may feel your loving presence and healing touch. We pray for all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones at this time. Especially we name Sylvia Bloomfield and Chris Weir's mother, Vera Fulwell. In annual remembrance, we name Peter Knight, Len Clark, Ron Rickards, Robert Cooper, Samuel Adams, George Dunn, John Bissell, Amy Lusley, Don Addison, Doris Rathbone, and Frank Carter. And in the quietness of our own hearts, let us pray for our own intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Bernardo. Could I ask you to stand if you're here in church? And during the sharing of the piece, Peter and Greg will come around and offer sanitizer gel. So if you'd like to use the sanitizer gel again before receiving communion, um, they will bring that around uh, if you want to use it at that point. For those of you joining us at home and for those of you here in church, we are joined together as one family, as one people, and together we share the peace. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there am I in the midst of them. Whether you're at home or whether you're here, we have that wonderful prom promise that Jesus Christ is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us share the sign of the peace that we are learning, that sign language peace, the peace of the Lord. And so we remain standing as we pray together the words of the preparation of the table. Gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people joined in praise and thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. 
The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. Please be seated. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in the one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ given for you. Amen.
the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You blessing if you'd like to leave from the back first so the back row go out first followed by the next row that just helps us to make sure we keep socially distanced if you want to chat with people please go onto the grass outside and uh, have a chat keep socially distanced um, if you if for whatever reason you prefer not to chat but just want to get home then just keep to the pavement and to the road and we we won't bother you um, and also as you leave the church if you would put your kneeler on your chair that will help the cleaning team to know that you've sat on that chair and that that chair needs a, a thorough clean after you've left so if you could put the kneeler on the chair that would be great
And also to say to the members of our cleaning team, you know who you are this week. If you stay sat while everyone else leaves, we will then bring you, uh, in fact, if I tell you where the cleaning equipment is, that would be helpful, wouldn't it? If it just in the ice cream corner, just outside around the, that would be great. Okay. And those of you at home, you'll have heard me mention the ice cream corner. Don't get too excited. We haven't got ice cream, sadly, this morning. And if you are at home, do remember to either join in with the Zoom chat or to give somebody a ring. It'd be brilliant just to keep that connection as you keep in contact with people. Go and make yourself a cup of tea and then sit down to have a chat with others. Well, our final blessing, if you'd please stand. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.